What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's your girl, Miss Honey. Happy Hump Day. It is 11.15 on a Wednesday night. I just finished watching Greenleaf. Um, the episode was a good episode. It was a bit all over the place, but, you know, that's how it is right now. Everything is... A mess. It's up in arms over at Greenleaf. Um, this episode, episode six, she changes everything. It was good. It was full of drama. You know, it wasn't on last week, so I missed it. I miss y'all. I know y'all miss me. Um, but we came back this week to bring the drama, and I'm here to talk about it. I am not going to go point by point. Because the show was all over the place, so you got to expect that the review going to be all over the place, too. All right? New to my channel, subscribe. Everybody, please, give me a thumbs up. And, of course, get down below with your comments. Now, let's talk about it. Y'all know that May is, first of all, when she want to be, she mean as a bag of rattlesnakes, okay? She ain't got nothing but venom for Bishop. She done came down the stairs in her PJs and high heels with this revised speech. Now, they done told the children, okay? And, you know, they make a reference where some of the children took it worse than others and so on and so forth. I'm like, okay, y'all. Um, now, this is the speech they're going to give when they go and talk to the church, which I didn't understand because she had, like, a whole three, four page soliloquy on this one paper. I mean, it was from top to bottom. All the margins were filled with verbiage and words. But when they got up there to do the speech, it wasn't much to do about nothing. Just more pomp and circumstance. All these showy moves. That's something that was bothering me about this episode. It was very, very obvious. Things were just moving along very obviously. I don't know why that bothers me. I just think at, when you write something... You have an opportunity to create the unexpected and it just always kind of seems like I'm let down and people give you the expected. I don't know. It's what the people want. You know, it's what the people want. Y'all tell me if y'all feel the same way. Anyway, but um, so, yeah, they argue back and forth. He he gives her an insult and it's all very dignified. The insults are all very, very dignified. And he makes a reference to how she can make uh, poop smell good, but it comes out as flowers out of the hard ground. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you are getting in her ass and she getting in your ass but it all sounds like Shakespeare and of course you know May's got that hair in and she's giving it to us and snatching and pulling and shoulders and gestures and moving across the room in a very theatrical way I was just like what is we doing May first of all first of all before you did any of this before you did any of this you could have sat down and talked with somebody. You should have sat down and talked with a bona fide counselor. Not your friend, Maxine Patterson, who shows up in this episode with Iyana and Van Zandt to save charity, but we're going to talk about that. Shows up and she's helping you not only divorce your husband, okay, but she's helping you steal the church that y'all built together and take it for yourself. What in the hell kind of pastor does that is what I like to know. I like to know what kind of pastor tells you to take it all. Divorce your husband and take it all. Why isn't your good girlfriend, who's a noted pastor worldwide, the people are gathering to take her picture and her autograph and ooh and an ah over her. And she's telling you to divorce your husband. Don't even pray about it, girl. Divorce your husband and try to take everything. Who does that? Who does that? Who? Anyway, um, Bishop and May go back and forth. It's back and forth every time you see them until the very, very end when they decide um, that they are going to go and tell the church. He tells her unequivocally without hesitation 
uh, I pay the tax debt of two million dollars. I take that debt on, and you can keep this house. Like, what the hell is May gonna do with that big old house? What's she gonna do with that big old house? She can't afford to pay for it, not unless she do get your church or y'all church. I mean, what's the point? What really is the point? What's the gesture? I guess to sell it. I don't know. He said, but you can't have a church. You can't stay after that. You got to be on about your way. And she said, well, can I at least have um, lunch with the first lady? You know, it's this, it's this, it's this seminar or, or dinner, you know, this thing where all the ladies gather. It's the first lady's dinner, essentially. Can I at least have that? And he was like, well, fine. So when they go up to give the speech about how it's going to go down. They got Charity, who Yana has found some type of way to, to um get her cleaned up and get her dusted off and get her standing up straight. And she's singing to a music track. I don't know. I think Deborah Jo Winans can sing. I think I vaguely remember her on an album, the Winans album. But every time I see her singing on this show, I'm just like, let, let Zora sing. You know what I'm saying? Let Grace sing. Let's hear what somebody else's voice sounds like, uh, Deborah Jo. I don't know. But, of course, everybody is just, oh, she's so spiritual. Mm. Grace is like, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I was like, child bye. <laughs> child bye. She might as well be singing a nursery rhyme up there. Not not, a, not now lick. Not now lick of nursing. Anyway. So they walk up to the stage holding hands, you know, and it's supposed to be this beautiful gesture and they want to make an announcement. Lady made them cast the arm back. Ah, have a seat quiet. We don't need a, we don't need a for selection. You know, and she dressed all, she didn't already cuss Charity out and, and, and made Charity sing. <laughs> Uh, she done cuss Charity out because they met with Iyama and Charity right before Sunday service. Okay. To talk about what was going on with Charity. And Charity couldn't get it out good before May took it and made it her own, baby. She gave us a speech. But we're going to talk about it. And uh, so she dressed sharp. They look good. And they tell them we're getting a divorce. And the church is like, oh, <sighs> that was it. Now, 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 now. <laughs> oh, you know, she said, well, you know, uh, May says um, she's going to be there through the la her lady and her, and her luncheon. And uh, it's going to be a whole day. And she's going to have a special guest, Maxine Patterson, who is in the audience. And everybody starts clapping. I mean, forget the fact that your pastor, I don't know how many years, just announced he was divorcing his wife. And the fact that Maxine Patterson is going to be there, well, now, now that just makes up for it, doesn't it? And uh, she she gives a little half preach, you know, a little popcorn sermon where she says it's going to be about the empowerment of ladies. And it's going to be a whole day of seminar all about the woman and the power that she exudes from deep down inside. And it's going to be called She Changes Everything. And when we are done with this lady and her luncheon, you're going to know that she changes everything. Bishop back there cleaning his glass. <laughs> he cleaned his glasses like, I, can, I cannot believe this Negro has taken this opportunity to try to hijack this thing. <laughs> uh, try to. Yeah, she did that. And so they hold hands and bring them up, you know, together like we going to still be together. He going to still be your bishop. And she said, I'll still be your first lady. <laughs> it's like, oh, mm, mm, mm. So... There's that. That's what's going on with May and Bishop. Now, let's talk about Charity. Charity done passed out. Charity is, is popping pills and she drinking. She's sleeping all day. She in full-on depression. The baby crying. Marisol done went and got May and May, May and Marisol and that little baby who varies in sizes depending on how close a father lens is on the baby varies in size and skin tone um 
They go to wake her up. Charity, are you under the influence? Your, your baby is crying for you. And she gets up. Mama, I don't even know. Well, anyway, she brushes May off. And May is like, look, what you don't want me to do is side with Kevin on this about you being an unfit mother. Charity, like, I tell you what you do. I tell you what you do. Close the door on your way out. Marisol got the baby. She going back to bed. She just really don't care. She in a full-on depression. So when Maxine come to see Lady May at the office after all the pictures and all the fanfare, and Bishop done seen Maxine now, by the way, and he suspects something going on. When Maxine and May get together, it can't be nothing but devil men. That's how he acted, even though he coming out of his office with Rochelle, talking about cryptocurrency. He really talking about uh, <laughs> how to get your fortune away, okay, to the nearest set of breasts you can find. Anyway, Maxine, she tell Maxine about uh, Charity and everything that's going on with Charity. I was like, girl, you giving it all to Maxine, ain't you? You giving it all to Maxine. Who driving this boat? You or Maxine? Okay. Anyway, uh, after Maxine agrees that she going to do the lady in the lunch, uh, and she has decided that she's going to call a good friend of her, a doctor, a soul doctor. And I already know people going to be out there talking about E. Yamla playing a doctor, and she ain't no doctor. Everybody know this. But the girl got a gift, and she did a good job on this episode being herself. Uh, so Lady May goes in and sees sees Charity and introduce her to E. Yamla. E. Yamla sit down with Charity. And try to have a talk with Charity. Of course, like everybody else, I, I'm sorry your mom, my mom invited you here. But ain't nothing to see here. Ain't nothing going on. Everybody going about their way. Yama starts doing what she do. Asking questions. You know, throwing it out there and, and seeing if it stick. You know, if it bounces off. If you absorb it. If you retort to it. If you get sad. You know, she's asking the question and she wants to see what your reaction is going to be. Well, it boils down to the fact that Charity um, doesn't feel safe and she doesn't feel wanted. She did challenge her on Kevin being gay and, um, you know, who told you that? You didn't want me to know? <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, you told everybody, girl. You told everybody. But anyway, and she said she really did not know. And she seemed a little doubtful there. She seemed like she didn't want to admit. Um, but he made her feel safe. And she don't feel safe no more that he's not around, that she ain't got nobody. She kind of blames it on her mom and not blames her, but she feel like some of the things that her mom has said and done issue so they agree to meet with lady may and bishop the next morning 7 a.m this is sunday morning right before church when they get together to meet with them lady may after she done stormed in and threatened bishop you know saying every, like i said every time she gets she 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 nasty uh if that's 7 a.m if that's fine with you when she's setting up the meeting charity wants to meet with us and the doctor that's fine may that's fine they sitting there, Bishop quiet, as soon as Charity get going, talking about the fact that she didn't feel safe. She didn't feel safe because Faith and Grace didn't feel safe. And that she even at the time, she didn't know why they wasn't feeling safe, but it made her feel even more scared. And conversations that she was hearing made her feel scared. And, and Lady May keep interrupting. And, and Dr. Iyana said this, She's just talking about what, her, what she was feeling at the time. Of course, Lady May takes it, makes it all her own. She makes it all about her. Not today. Not today. I can't hear this today. I'm about to make the biggest speech of my uh, 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 of, of our lives. And I can't do this today. I've already gone through enough, especially since I'm getting it from your sister, my oldest daughter. I will not have this today. You feel scared? You feel scared? Really? You feel afraid? Well, you know what? Pray and ask for faith. And if you can't pray to ask for faith, pray to get faith. Okay. Or oh, have faith enough to pray or something like that. And if you can't have faith enough to pray, pray for faith. Something. Anyway, some little smart comment that was dismissive. Okay. And belittling. 
And I'm just like, Jacob over at his house doing his thing. Kevin doing whatever he doing. The baby crying. The mama, the, 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 the mama is divorcing the daddy. Okay, she ain't on tour no more. Grace doing her own thing with Darius and Rochelle. You know what I'm saying? Like, and nobody is taking a minute. Just take a doggone minute. If you got a family member in trouble, just take a daggone minute. I just don't understand what the hell y'all talking about during family meetings. Anyway, May storms off. And 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 Bishop says, We're here for you, baby. And she says, No, you're no, you're not. And and after what happened just now, I don't think you ever will be. I was like, Y'all better watch that hopeless talk. Watch that hopelessness. Cause that hopelessness will drag a soul down. But it's just a show, right? Huh? Take a lesson. Take a lesson. Watch that hopelessness. Watch it. Watch it. Because it will be a weight around your neck in a sinking, sinking place. I promise you. Anywho, that's charity. All right. So Grace get a call from Darius. And Darius got a story that he want to tell her. He really want her to take on this case of this woman who killed her husband with a hammer. And, she, and, and they believe it's self-defense. Now, Grace is dealing with this. And she's dealing with her parents divorcing. And she's dealing with... Things that are going on at the church because right after they announced their divorce, she's walking through the vestibule where everybody is standing around openly, loudly whispering about the breakup, the divorce, how they saw it coming. Uh, lottery winner, Sister Clara, has decided that uh, she can't stay there. She's she's going to stay through Maxine Patterson's uh, late in luncheon presentation and then she got to find her another church because she can't be with to sit up on an old divorce pastor. I was like, child. Grace walking through and she just listening to everybody whisper and talk and 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 you're not gonna do is sit around and talk and whisper. And I'm right here. I'm right here. Okay. I don't like that. Anyway, before all this happened, she meet with meet with Rochelle. She got Rochelle. Rochelle just left her daddy's office talking about cryptocurrency. We all know it's a scam. He's supposed to make a lot of money and all of this. And I'm just like, Bishop, come on, dude. Come on. Come on now. You ain't got nobody you can talk that can vet this out for you. Nobody. Grace sitting there with Rochelle. Like I said, she done left Bishop and Darius there. And Grace is trying to talk to her. Talk to this talk to her about this woman who has killed her husband with a hammer brutal brutal crime or or, or act and Rochelle is like ta -ta -ta -ta. uh Darius is that shirt custom made no it's, I got it off the rack well did you buy it for him Grace because it fits lovely it's around how it fits around the collar and Grace is looking like okay I'm like okay Grace don't fall for it please don't fall for this but she does she does. She tells um, after Rochelle leaves, after a couple of more schmoozes with Darius, Rochelle leaves and she tells Darius, she, that woman really has a thing for you. And Darius is like, really? <laughs> you think so? And she's like, yeah. She said she played me. She's good. She's good. She played me. I was like, I don't know what you mean by that. Played you with this money, this situation, this story that Darius has brought to you arbitrarily. Now he see the story about this woman who bashed her husband in the head with a, a hammer and it's supposed to be self-defense. I don't know the details of the story. They tell it snippets of it in and out of it, just a little bit like reporters on TVs and laptops and stuff like that. Grace don't really talk about it very much before Rochelle go to hitting on Darius. Um, you you just accepting this. You're not doing no research. You got to get permission from Rochelle to do this. Your daddy depending on Rochelle for money. Like, y'all, is there any discernment? Or are we just all so far down the rabbit hole that we are accepting wooden nickels, okay, and beanstalk beans? 
okay, and gumdrops and rainbows for currency around here, for common sense, for decency, for morals and ethics. Nobody is vetting anybody out. Before you take money and put somebody over money, why wouldn't you do a check on this Rochelle woman? Ain't nobody going to run her paperwork. Nobody going to credit check her. I know Darius said he checked her out. But girl, you got a double and you got a triple in this world. You got a double and you got a triple. Why would you get this to Darius to do when it's something you could have done yourself and had the paperwork before you? All her addresses, previous addresses, phone numbers, everything. Girl, you need to be vetting this woman out. Why you don't have why haven't you hired a private investigator? This woman gonna take your tearing your family apart. Gonna take your, your daddy's money, and if you're not careful, your money. Your man already with her. I suspect, I officially suspect Darius of being in cahoots with Rochelle. Now, we don't see a lot of Jacob and Carissa, except the fact that Zora, after she get caught going in Marisol's purse, taking Marisol's phone, Lady May lays into her and cuts her low, okay, gets right up on her. And Zora get her grandmama more respect than she give her own mama. Okay. And and Lady May tells her she can't leave the room unless she with her. And to go to church, go to school. That's it. She can't have, have access to the rest of the house. Okay. So in Lady May's face, she walks in Lady May's room while she in the bed. And can I call my mother? And Lady May says yes. And right there in Lady May's face, she tell her mama she want to come home. Lady May don't say a word. When she called Carissa, Carissa said, I'm going to have to talk to your daddy. She go talk to Jacob, and Jacob said, hell no. But Jacob! Jacob said, I said, hell no. <laughs> well, I mean, I just thought, he, he was like, look, things are getting rough for over there. That's where she need to be. She need to stay in it until she get right. Okay? She being disrespectful over there. My mama going to keep her gathered. So when she go to tell Zora, Zora act like she cool with it. You know why? Because she all day Sunday, instead of her being in church, she there in Grace's office on the laptop FaceTiming the, the abuser. See, Zora a full-time sneaker now. She's a sneaker. She's a thief. She has decided that this boy is more important than her family and herself. It's a dangerous place to be in. It really, really is. Okay? And until something devastating happens, she's going to keep down, keep on this path. She really, really is. And she's going to leave him and she's going to go to the next. Anyway, um, Zora also goes to see Sophia. Sophia is feeling bad. She's feeling mighty bad. Y'all know they done took the girl's ovaries. She can't have no children. She's feeling bad about it. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. And the whole house knows. It seems like the whole church knows. Roberto knows. He come to see her, bring her Teddy. He brings her consolation and a word of prayer. Do you want to pray? No. She put Zora out. She don't want to talk to her mama. She done decided she's not going to church no more. She done went down to the river and took off her cross and her necklace and threw it in the in the river, she ain't going back to church no more. And anybody that approached Sophia can get it, including Zora. But Zora don't care. Zora all about herself. Charity, for the first time in a long time, feels absolutely positively alone. And I'm telling you, the, the exact pill, the exact remedy that Charity needs is to stop relying on others. Who's coming to save you, Charity? Nobody. Who's going to save you, Charity? Charity is. Charity is the only one that can save Charity, okay? Zora uh, needs to have a switch cut, okay? Like I said, she needs to be broken down. You know what I'm saying? She needs somebody to get up in that grill. Okay, and check that attitude and snatch it down. Okay, she needs somebody to remind her just how fragile, okay, this thing is. She need to have respect. Okay, she don't have no respect for nobody. I'm telling you, this stealing, this stealing thing, get that stealing under control. Because we already know, you lying, you're stealing. If you lie, you're stealing.
If you steal, you do what? Kill. Get it under control. Okay? Lady May, girl, let me tell you something. You're going to let this anger and you're going to let this venom rob you of everything you have worked for if you're not careful. Bishop, ain't no fool like an old fool. Okay? Grace, if you don't keep your eyes open, what you best do is smarten up. And start running checks and hiring private eyes. And everybody that you didn't give birth to or grow up with going to have to have a credit check run on their lives. I'm just telling you that right now. You trying to figure out, figure out what Rochelle got going on. When you could know like that if you had the girl follow. Come on now. And you going to lead a flock? Goodbye. Where is Carissa from season one? Where Carissa from season one? The Carissa that was snapping and biting and, and about to scratch folks' eyes out left and right. Where is that Carissa? Can we have that Carissa back? That's Greenleaf, y'all. Y'all tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Put it down below. Let me know. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's a mess, y'all. It is a mess. What y'all think about Maxine Waters? I enjoyed Iyanla. Iyanla told uh, Lady May when, when they was packing up Maxine and, and sending her on her way. Okay, she's going to be back for the ladies' luncheon. But uh, Iyanla told um, Lady May, okay. Lady May said she felt ambushed. It, Max, uh, Iyanla said you wasn't ambushed. I'm sorry, you felt ambushed. I wasn't, it wasn't that I felt ambushed. I was ambushed. And she said, by your daughter's truth. And I'll come back. She said, you didn't invite me here. I didn't come here to see you. She said, but by the looks of you and what you got going on, when you get ready for me, you call me and I won't hesitate to come back and help you. I was like, mm. that's green leaf, y'all. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. Till next time, honey bee. Mm, mm, mm. I'll holler.